Would you rather have $100 worth of gold or $100 worth of Bitcoin? While gold has thousands of years being a currency, Bitcoin is essentially the digital gold. They both have scarcity, but Bitcoin's definitely easier to transfer nowadays compared to chopping up some gold. If you invested a dollar, one dollar into Bitcoin in 2010, you'll be worth you'll be worth two million two hundred sixty-nine thousand dollars today. Did I just blow your mind? And we've gradually gotten used to this environment where we can't pay another person unless there's a corporation involved. And that's astonishing to me. And as cash disappears, that then becomes a final fact that every single payment in your life will be from you to a corporation. And that corporation takes a piece of that, every and that, single thing. And not just that. It doesn't just take a piece. It also controls and surveils and monitors your use. And if you violate the terms and conditions, you are destitute. Every once in a while, someone comments and says crypto is a scam. But you know what's the biggest scam of them all? Central banks and money printing. Just because of this coronavirus, the U.S. has printed $1.5 trillion. That's 1.5 thousand billions. They call this quantitative easing and they said, oh, it's to prevent unusual disruptions in markets. You might think this is great. Oh, they're printing money to put in your pockets, right? No, the money is going into their friends' pockets, the richest of the richest. They do this because in times of turmoil, like right now in the world, people stop buying stuff and they stop buying stocks and economic activity goes down. And thus we have a deflation where things get cheaper and people can actually live their lives frugally. This is what we want. We want cheaper prices when stuff is going down in the world and we're not working. But the government doesn't want that. They want you to keep spending a lot of money and keep the prices high. Why? Because they have powerful friends they want to please. They want to have that disparity in this society. That's the biggest scam. Since the start of 2020, we're up over 30%. So this was 2019, and this is 2020 so far. Overall, the momentum definitely seems to be coming back. Bitcoin's currently trading at 6,878. Some people believe in the upcoming months, we could retest the $20,000 highs or rock it even higher than that. The reason being an event that's coming up in the next 20 days. It's called the halving or the halvening. Currently, when a miner validates transactions within a block and appends it to the blockchain, they're rewarded with 12.5 Bitcoin for solving the hashing algorithm. And this issuance of Bitcoin is the only way that you're adding to the economic supply of Bitcoin. So with the halving, the 12.5 Bitcoin reward goes down to 6.25. So there's less Bitcoin in the supply. If you're looking at a supply and demand chart on daily price and you lower the amount of supply that's out there, theoretically, if demand stays the same, the price should go up. And this happens around every four years. So let's look at what happened in the past. The first halving took place in 2012. And 369 days later, you reached an all-time high, 8,000% return. Second halving, you had 526 until the next all-time high, 2,900%. And now you have the third halving. My personal opinion, we hit a new all-time high at the end of 2021 or beginning of 2022. Nope. Yep. So you back him. I'm a savage. Yeah. Classy, bougie, ratchet. Discussing this idea of having the Federal Reserve issue a new type of digital U.S. dollar in order to stimulate the U.S. economy. Now printing money is one thing, but having a digital money printer is a whole different idea. Now for one, it is kind of a smart way to convince people of this new type of digital currency that is easier to use, so it doesn't leave a sour taste in people's mouth when they inflate the money supply. But the problem with this is that when everything goes cashless, everything becomes traced by the government. 
Right now, use your credit card and your bank account and they can be traced and with your Apple Pay and Google Pay, yes, they're collecting your data. But it's not so directly by the government. And you do have the option to deal in physical cash. But if everything is cashless, there is no physical cash that you can go to that is pseudo-anonymous. Your taxes will be automatically deducted. You can't dispute any fines or fees. You can be shut out from not just one bank account, but the entire monetary system if they don't like something that you do. Bitcoin, in this case, can be the digital replacement of cash. So you see a squeeze. The price is making lower highs and higher lows. So the price has to make a decision either to go to the upside or to go to the downside. And ideally you want to see a validation of a new support or resistance like so before you enter. So one by one, we got our push. We got our first pullback. We get another injection of buy volume. We get our second validation that it's a support. And that's where we entered right here at the one hour close where we know that we have two zones where we validated the price as a support. Take profit one, take profit two, take profit three. And that's where we're currently at.